Hey lads, how's it going? So, I've had a thought recently. I want to expand my horizon a bit more in this game. I want to play more heroes, um, but there's a problem with that. I'm very biased when it comes to picking heroes. So, I won't play those heroes until I'm actually forced into that role. So here's the deal. We're going to jump into an unranked all-pit game, <coughs> right? We're going to hit random, and then for that, whatever hero we get, we're going to play them for two weeks. And during that two weeks, we're going to learn some things, right? And then after those two weeks, we're going to come back, I'm going to analyze the hero, and see what I find. Okay, so that's good. Let's give it a shot. Shouldn't ban heroes. So I'm going to be random. Oh. Right. Okay. Your turn to pick. See. <laughs> okay. Oh no, you didn't. Yeah. Wow. Incredible. Oh no. Why are you running? Why are you running? A fighting shield. Sir. I'm under attack. Ah. I'm about to end this man's whole career. Boom. Nice. Yes. Boom. Bam. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh yeah! <laughs> and it's gone! Ready? So I ran up Davidon a hero that I already play, but the rules are the rules, and so I started a bit and played the hero for exactly two weeks, with 22 games clocked in. Over the two weeks I've had a 55% win rate, uh, 12 wins to 10 losses, and even though I've had nearly 70 games in the hero before doing this, I've actually learned a lot in terms of matchup knowledge, uh, because I've had to force myself into shitty matchups, and even then I only experienced one game where I felt pretty useless. I'm here to explain what I've found over the two weeks. Uh, his pros, his cons, and what exactly the spooky boy can achieve in his matches. So, let's start from the bottom. Abaddon is a melee strength hero whose role in fights is to keep you all alive. Outlast the enemy and poke things with his spooky sword. This dude is an aura wielding unkillable machine at times who tends to be the last to drop in team fights and has a tendency to cut people with his edgy voice lines. You thought I missed. After my first game, I thought to myself how I'm going to spice things up. After all, I am going to be playing the literally the exact same hero for two weeks straight. And then it came to me. I've got to make the ugliest set I could possibly imagine. I mean, the guy's character model is already fucking garbage, so why not make it even worse, right? So I then proceeded to buy every set I could possibly get my hands on, and proceeded to dress my kendo. So after stealing the clothes of a homeless man, Abaddon is now ready to take the world by storm. But how? How do you become a spooky horseman who just spouts out mispunch repeatedly? Why, with abilities of course. Okay, so first of all I wanted to start with a Follic Shield. It's pretty basic, you shield an ally after 200 damage and apply a strong dispel. Once you receive absorb damage, it explodes in the 700 JRE. Not gonna lie, sounds kinda dookie. But, a Photic Shield by itself is the reason why you'd even pick Abaddon in the first place, or at least during Hero Select. In early to mid game, the 200 damage is nice, don't get me wrong, but a strong dispel on a 6 second cooldown, that ability to remove stuns, slows, silences, roots and more, is strong enough throughout the entire game. Beastmaster Rule? Shield. Batrider Lasso? Shield. Mars Spear? Shield. Got 99 problems, but a stun ain't one for Abby. 
And as long as you're chilling next to your homeboy, he ain't going nowhere. In the laning phase, it acts as a safe harassment tool, allowing to trade efficiently against the enemy. This proves essential early on, since the man clothed in armor and mist has fucking one armor, yet some back fat gives you nine. Cause like, you know, duh. The shield can be disgusting in lanes, allowing you and your allies to dive the enemy and realize that your bag of fucks to give is completely empty, as you watch the enemy desperately try and run from the second highest movement speed in the entire game. Feels good, man. I found that if I didn't really know what to max first, you can't really go wrong with a Photic Shield. I mean, it's used offensively, it's used defensively. The only gripe with leveling this ability is that it doesn't really scale too hard. Between 1 and 4, you gain 90 damage absorption. However, you do lose 6 seconds off the cooldown, which is nice against lanes with stuns and slows. Oh, you're, you're going in. What uh, is fucking. Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Next up we got ourselves Curse of Avernus, his passive, which brings out his spooky side. You poke things and they slow down, but if you poke them four times, then they can't talk, and people enjoy punching them. I was gonna shit on this ability, but after going through the change logs and realizing that it's 100% more improved from its previous passive before patch 20, I was willing to give it a chance, and boy how I was wrong. This passive is dope. You know what's better than killing heroes? Getting objectives. I know, I know, trying to win the game is very controversial, but surprisingly, Curse works on towers, barracks, roche, shrines, you name it, and people like hitting Curse targets. Y you get some kind of dopamine rush when you're playing Trin, who all of a sudden becomes Jojo and just starts fisting Roche into the next dimension. Curse is something special. It brings people together, and when you see that tower get spooked, you just gotta hit it. And if your team are mongoloids, fuck them. Just hit it yourself. Once they realize at minute 20 that the Radiance Abaddon with a Vladimir's is hitting their tier 2, they're gonna come running and that's gonna create a lot of space for your carry. Not a lot to say about his passive to be honest. It's nice, it gets shit done and it adds to the versatility that is Abaddon. Oh and I forgot to mention the silence as well, if that wasn't strong enough. Miss Coil. So you're probably wondering, why was Miss Coil left last? Well my friends, I personally believe that Miss Coil is one of the, if not the most underrated ability in the entire game. It has so much hidden potential, and over the two weeks, I've grown to love this ability. First things first, we gotta cover what it actually is. Mystical is a single target ability that allows Abby to shoot his goo on people. If it's allies, it heals, if it's enemies, it damages. However, it costs health to use, which can be used to deny yourself as a 4.5 second cooldown, which only costs 50 mana to use. Mystical is an absolute beast in lane. Just due to the sheer versatility that ability offers, you want to take a value point and max shield a curse, that's perfectly fine. Oh, it only costs 50 mana and 75 health to throw out 120 points of damage every 4.5 seconds. Pretty good value point. Struggling to see the value in this? Alright, so, imagine you go against, let's say, a Monkey King and an Oracle. A disgusting matchup for Abaddon. Not really much you can do, Oracle's Fortune's End purges both shield and all areas of curse, plus Monkey King doesn't really give a fuck about the curse because you know he's Monkey King. And what do you do? You're screwed. Psych! Miscoil, baby. A single point of Miscoil allows you to farm from range 120 damage every 4.5 seconds. Nobody is fucking contesting that shit. Nobody. Oh, oh, but that 75 damage is gonna rack up sooner or later, right? Wrong. False. Miscoil self damage is pure, not HP removal, which means a Photic Shield eats that shit. Grab yourself a Soul Ring. With arcane boots and tranks, sit in lane and grab every last hit whilst repeatedly running within 700 range of the enemy just so you can pop a fast shield over him. All of a sudden, you turn a rough lane into a decent lane. Sure, that Monkey King's gonna be getting free farm, but he's not the only one that's gonna be fishing mad stacks. So, I mentioned earlier that Mystical's self damage is absorbed by a Photic Shield due to it being pure rather than HP removal. I also wanted to add that Mystical speeds up Abaddon's farming rate due to the fact they pop shield. I like to call this shield bombing. This is the situation where you know you're going to have a free lane, so you can max miss coil over shield. The reason for this is that you can pop that shit on demand. Level 2 miss coil is 10 damage off of popping level 1 shield. Level 3 miss coil can instantly pop level 1 shield. And level 4 miss coil can instantly pop level 2 shield. And once you hit level 15, 
you gain access to the plus 75 damage slash heal on miscall that blows up at all stages of the shield. Prioritising creep waves and small caps, you can get an early vlads or a sub 20 minute radiance in an offlane as long as you have both soul ring and arcing boots to keep you spamming waves. Everyone's had the experience where you go to kill a pudge, you throw out all your time getting to him, you find him, you beat the shit out of him, throwing volleys of spells and attacks into him, early for him to just deny himself. Are you sure about that? Nothing in Dota is more infuriating than wasting time and resources on committing to a kill only for them to kill themselves and spam chat will think that it's some sort of god. Well, guess what? Abby can do this on demand. There's another reason for why we get Soul Ring. Let's say we have level 1 Mystical. With this and a Soul Ring, you can do 245 damage to yourself. You have a buffer period of 245 damage to waste their fucking time, and they will hate you. Just don't forget to spam chat will or all chat, just to really tilt the opposition. Been in a bit of a scuffle and run out of regen? No shrines available and your friend is a tango whoring nut gobbler? Why run all the way to base or hug the courier when you can just kill yourself? That's right, kill yourself. Do it you pussy. And finally, we have reached his final ability. Borrowed time, the penultimate in not giving a fuck. Abaddon slaps his airpods in, he puts his favourite Linkin Park album on shuffle, completely enveloped by the edge. He now feels nothing. Or at least for like 6 seconds. Yeah, that's pretty much it. For up to 6 seconds, everything that hurts him, heals him, including Miss Coil, but not HP removal like Soul Ring. It is both an active and a passive. If you drop below 400 health, the ultimate triggers automatically. Personally, this should never happen unless you're silenced. Always activate borrow time. Everyone knows that when Abaddon drops low, it's always going to trigger and then people just let him walk around being edgy until it wears off and then they kill him. I see a lot of Abaddon players doing this and it's so predictable. So you know how a Photic Shield has a strong dispel? Well, borrow time also has a self strong dispel which can be used during stuns, what? And this my dudes, is how you want to use his ultimate. Whenever you see high damage coming, pop the ult. Whenever you get disabled by a long ass stun, pop the ult. It's a straight up get out of jail free card. Oh, but I'm at full health, fuck you, doesn't matter. You got 4-6 to six seconds to do whatever you like boy. Quit crying and use that ultimate, because once you realise how busted this ultimate feels, when you're against Bane, Beastmaster, Mars, Windranger, you ain't gonna go back to the old way because nobody can fucking tussle with the Mistmeister. Get your hand off my penis! Alright, let's wrap this up. I spent way too much time on this and the battle pass just dropped, so I wanna grab those sweet, sweet trivia points. Alright, moving on to his talents. At level 10, he can choose between 20 movement speed or 25% XP again. 90% of the time, it's gonna be XP again. The reasons for this are number one, his talents are pretty dope so trying to get to it is better and number two, he's already fast as fuck boy. I found myself only picking the movement speed when I am either first or second position or I plan to just sit in lane and push, yoinking levels from the creeps that I kill, but it's all about level 20 which we'll get onto later. The level 15 talents entirely depends on the damage output for the enemy. You got the choice between 75 damage uh, on miscoil or slash heal or a armor. This call is pretty straightforward, but in fact I usually end up just taking this, however the real MVP is that armor increase. Abby starts with one armor, and that has an agility gain of 1.5 per level, that's fucking dookie. Can carries can usually just shred through your health bar, and you're gonna have to ult all the time. Not really ideal. So it's just past 20 minutes, and you have face boots and a flads, and you just hit level 15. All of a sudden, tables be turning and you're sitting at a juicy 23 armor at 20 minutes. That's 60% physical damage reduction. Boy, that's some good shit. This talent is a lifesaver. I highly recommend picking it up when they have burst physical damage. Then we hit the big mark for Abby, level 20. All the other levels can suck a dick. This is where it's at. We're talking 90 damage on your right clicks. We're talking 20% cooldown reduction on already spammable life saving spells. This level is huge and propels Abby into the late game, giving him the tools he needs to tussle with the big lads. 90 damage is pretty straightforward, if you're thinking, I like hitting things, well now you're better at it. 
You combine this with your curse and you're not only going to be taking lives, you're going to be slamming objectives left, right and centre too. The other choice is 20% cooldown reduction. This is where the magic happens, because it allows you to play so goddamn aggressive. A 5 second strong dispel shield with Vora time being knocked down to a 32 second cooldown. By the time it's finished, we're looking at a 26 second cooldown hole. But hey, that doesn't sound that great. Well that's where Octoene Core comes into play. This item is fucking trash right now. But I love it on the server because you get a 2.7 second mist coil, a 3.6 second shield, and a borrow type sitting at a balanced 24 second cooldown with a downtime of 18 seconds after use. Ooh, if that doesn't moisten the loins, then I don't know what. You can combo this item with ags and cooldown items like Blink, and you can just have an absolute spam fest, and it is a beautiful sight to see. Finally, we got level 25. Uh, for being the last level, it's pretty meh. You have the choice between a 375 AoE Mist Coil or 225 additional health to a Photic Shield. If you took the bonus damage of Mist Coil, you take the AoE. Otherwise, go, just go Shield. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. But what does an Abaddon truly need? Let's find out. So if you didn't see by now, Abaddon is a really fucking versatile hero, which makes him an amazing first pick, and you can probably pick any item in the game and still make it work with this hero. He's just a great design. It just works. I found you could play in three different ways in terms of items. If you're rocking a position 1 or 2, you can obviously spec into right click with Radiant, Vlad's, Maelstrom, or even an Echo Saber if you need quicker curse procs. Position 3 and 4, you're looking at auras and keeping your team alive. Uh, items like Pipe and Mech and Ags are good at this. And then position 5 is just the bog standard support items like Arcane Boots, Urn, Glimmer Cape, Force Staff, and even a recent favourite of mine, Holy Locket. <coughs> Like I said before, Abby being extremely versatile can take a lot of items from the shop, but there are a few items that I want to address because I find them kind of interesting. First up, Radiance and Vlads. In every Abaddon game, you should consider either of these items, or even just both of them. They are, in my opinion, god tier items on this hero, or at least the Vlads since Radiance is expensive of course. Uh, there is no excuse except position 5, and even then, you should still consider picking up a Vlads. What could be my favourite item on this hero? The Chad Vlads, Agonims, the spiky embrace of a blade mill. Get the sweet shit out of here, it's a fucking blink dagger baby. I'll be honest, it's situational, but it's an amazing scape tool. I mean, sure he's fast, but can he outrun 5 heroes bouncing on his dick? Fuck no. That's where Blink Dagon opens your third eye and you can instant transmission out of existence. Because whilst Borrowed Time is active, you're technically taking zero damage, and you have six seconds to blink the fuck out of there. And you can soak an instance of stun with that ult also. It's not going to help you snowball, but it's a great fucking tool against low lockdown team comps. I brought his agonims up a few times, and if you don't know what it does, it increases Borrowed Time by a second and for the duration of the ultimate, 50% of the damage your allies take is redirected back to you. It sounds good, but it is not. You get 19 value out of this You can't run away! You're in for a world of hurt! Oh! I'm afraid you... Fight! So patch 722 just dropped, literally as I was editing the Aghanim section, and boy am I happy, because this new Ags is dope. I mean, it achieves the same thing as the old one, but like, on crack cocaine. So what's the new Aghanim's upgrade? So basically, borrowed time is increased by a second, and just like his old one, during borrowed time, any allied hero that takes 525 damage gets a face full of his homebrewed mist goo. Now, I didn't really like his old axe too much, usually against predictable burst and teamfight ultimates and negated some damage, but it wasn't anything that a pipe or a crimson guard could accomplish. This new Agnums, however, negates so much fucking damage if used in the right situation. The new axe uses almost an exact replica of your Mist Coil. This includes items and the bonus heal talent at level 15, however not the level 25 AoE Mist Coil because that would be busted. 
this means that we finally have a viable use for Holy Locket. Miss Coil with Holy Locket and the Talent Heal bumps up Miss Coil to just under 400 HP heal. So every time someone takes 500 damage, they heal for 400. That's up to 80% damage reduction compared to the 50% on the previous Aglims. Oh, and another great thing about his new axe is it's just got a casual 1600 radius. You know, compared to his older axe, which had 900 AoE, this is a massive buff for him, and it means that long range heals are always an option. However, unlike 721 Drow Ranger, it's actually got some downsides to it. First up, and most obvious, it is a projectile after all, it's got travel time. Secondly, it's triggered by damage instances, which means that one instance of 1200 damage is going to trigger one mist coil, whereas 10 instances of 1200 damage is going to trigger two mist coils. These first two points make it worse against high burst damage compared to his old axe. And lastly, it's still a hill. It can be stopped by an ice cream cone and a spooky Chinese relic, so just be careful of those. Because of these cons, I think it is the situational axe, but there's a reason why I only have one 20 second clip of me using the old axe, because it was super situational, and I picked it up once because of a void. However, I think this new one, you should be thinking of picking up around 50% of the time, since other aura items don't give you the survivability of your teams like an Agnames. Alright, uh, I think that about covers my knowledge on the hero and what I gained over the two weeks. It didn't really turn out how I wanted since I play Abaddon anyway, so I didn't really learn that much. However, when it comes to matchup knowledge, I actually learned a decent amount. And before I head off, I'll quickly cover the worst matchups I encountered in those two weeks. So, Viper breaks both your passives, Oracle purges all your shit, Monkey King doesn't care, Razor reliably has a steel target and stops you from being effective in first and second position roles, Aeos stops the healing, uh, Witch Doctor Cast abuses your small cast range, Lich Chain Frost abuses small, your small cast range, and Grimstroke Soulbind also abuses your small cast range. Yeah, you get the idea. Anyway, Abaddon's a fun hero, and has a lot of underappreciated bullshit at disposal. I hate talking about this hero, so I'm gonna go now. Goodbye! I eat that much for dinner!